uses of radioactivity, um, I will refer you to chapter 24 on this as I feel like it's fairly straightforward. I'm just going to hit some big highlights here, all right? Um, but I would highly recommend that if you missed this section or if you didn't understand it, you go to page uh, chapter 24 in your book. Um, because it covers it fairly, I think it's fairly straightforward, all right? Um, so one of the things is that there's lots of uses in medicine, okay? One is that they are, that some radioactive um, isotopes can be used as tracers, and tracers are basically, they get taken up by different organs, and then uh, they can be detected. But in order to be a tracer, first of all, it has to emit gamma radiation, otherwise, the penetrating power isn't um, strong enough and it won't be able to be uh, detected, right? If you put something in your body and you want to look at it as it comes out, alpha certainly won't make it out and neither will beta. Um, so it has to be gamma radiation, but it also has to have a short half-life because you don't want that gamma radiation in your patient for days and days and days. Obviously, that's uh, it's not going to go very well. Okay, um, so those would be the requirements for what you would want a tracer to be, all right? It can also be used as a treatment, and by a treatment, um, the idea is, we, we've talked about this, but the idea of radiating cancerous cells. If you expose the cell to too much radiation, then the DNA will mutate to such a degree that it won't, it won't um, be able to copy itself. And this is usually alpha or beta radiation. Uh, because you don't want the gamma throughout the whole body. Again, you want to be able to target it. So, for example, if I have, um, you know, cancer in my, I don't know, my thyroid, then um, usually they use a beta a radiation, a, beta, a radioactive isotope that emits beta particles um, so that you don't expose your entire body to the radiation, right? And then, of course, the other thing is sterilization in medical Okay, and of course, sterilizing is going to be used, um, sorry, is, it uses gamma radiation, again, because you want um, the rays to penetrate through the plastic or the glass or whatever the casing is for the thing that you want to be sterile, right? So the idea is that you take your syringe, you put it in plastic, and then you radi irradiate it. You don't contaminate it, you make sure that it doesn't it doesn't stay radioactive, right? But the idea is that you pass the radioactive waves through it, the gamma waves through it, and it becomes sterilized. So that kills all the any bacteria or viruses that are on it. So those are the three main uses in medicine. Okay, it is also used in um, uh, science for radioactive dating. You can basically um, look at carbon, you've probably heard of the term carbon dating, so that would be a scientific use. And then there's a couple of uses in industry. Uh, one of them is gamma radiography, which is the same idea as x-rays. So this is often used for scanning um, I'm trying, uh, in airports, right? Scanning um, luggage, that's what I'm looking for, luggage and things like that. Um, it can also be used in construction. Sorry, I'll write this stuff down. So it can be used uh, in construction as well to basically um, you can pass the gamma waves through and then have a photographic film on the other side. And that way you can see um, what the structure looks like, whether there's any faults or cracks in like a welding uh, a support or something like that. And the um, so x-rays work for all of this as well. But gamma radiography is often more convenient because x-rays usually need a power source and they are quite large. So gamma radiography is used if you want it to be portable and you don't need to have a, a power source or any large equipment. Right. The other thing that it's used for is called gauging. And I am not going to attempt to draw this. Um, so again, I will use the book. Right. So the idea here is that you have, a, if this is a coal hopper, right? And the idea is if you want to see how full your coal hopper is, there's a lot of dust around. And so you can't do that all, all the time with visual light. So instead, you have a radiation sources and then detectors on the other side. So this could be um, gamma or, or, or any, yeah, it's usually gamma. Um, and so they pass through. And so you can tell by how much of it reaches your, whether you're looking at dust or whether you're looking at the actual coal that's there. And so you can get, it, it's, literally called a gauging because you're gauging how much um, coal is within that hopper, All right? So those are your different uses of um, radioactivity. Uh, you need to also need to know the dangers of radioactivity. Obviously, um, there are, there, it, the main one is cell damage, uh, DNA and cell damage and cell mutations that would result from that. 
And for that, when you're thinking about what are the dangers, you also need to think about the type of radiation, right? So for example, if I there's an alpha radiation source, but it's outside my body, that's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to penetrate my skin. It's not going to, it doesn't increase my risk of cancer very much. But for example, alpha particles that get, um, for example, in cigarette smoke, right? If you're inhaling them directly into your lungs, even if alpha particles do not penetrate very far, they're still penetrating some, and that's enough that it can cause cancer um, in your throat or esophagus or or, or things like that, where you're actually um, the inner membrane, which is not as protected as the skin. Um, and of course, one of the big things about the dangers is you want to reduce your exposure time because the, the longer you, you have uh, exposure, then the higher the risk of um, a health problem like cancer. And the way that a lot of, like when we talk about how do you measure exposure, how do you know how much exposure you've had, a lot of times we're the thing that people use for that is a photographic film badge. So you wear a little film badge and that then you can get it developed and see how much radiation you've been exposed to.